our last speaker before the question debate, and this is Sabrina Gertner, who's the manager of the Horsley Project um, at Switzerland, to speak about the animal welfare problems associated with horse meat imports from the non So, uh, Sabrina. You're just struggling with the microphone here, Keith. Oh, right, one okay. second. Oh, there we go. Right. <coughs> Hi, my name is Sabrina Gordner and I work as a project manager for the Tierschutzbund Zürich and its German sister organization Animal Welfare Foundation. I would like to talk to you about animal welfare problems associated with horse meat imports from overseas. I'm not sure if I will be able to finish in 10 minutes if they have the investigation was carried out. The investigation was carried out in Canada, USA, Mexico, Argentina, and Uruguay. We investigated along the complete horse meat production chain, which includes auctions, collecting stations transports, border crossings, feedlots, and slaughterhouses. The findings are unacceptable. The horses are systematically abused and neglected. No matter whether in North or South America, violations against animal welfare standards as adopted by the EU are the norm. The EU imports more than 26,000 tons of horse meat from these countries each year. About 70% of the horses slaughtered in Canada originate from the USA where they are bought at auctions. Sick and injured horses do not get veterinary care but are, are sold to so-called kill buyers and transported to slaughter. Transports from the USA to Canada are very long and can last several days. In the feedlots of the slaughterhouse Hoovering in Alberta, Canada, Thousands of horses are fattened under cruel conditions for six months. I would like to show you a sequence from our film about horse meat imports. The sequence was filmed at the feedlots of Bouvry in October 2013. We are still on the company premises of Free at the so-called prime feedlot, the feedlot closest to the main building. A dead mare is lying in the mud. The stage of decomposition indicates that she has been dead for about four days, maybe longer. It is the 24th of October, 2013, the temperature below freezing point. The mare hasn't been taken care of for a long time. The neglected hooves are also evidence of this. The mare probably died during the birth of her foal. Her foal lies two meters away from her, also heavily decomposed. Parts of it are missing. Here you get wild coyotes that help themselves to the carcasses. All this before the very eyes of the persons responsible at the Canadian slaughterhouse Bouvry. And all this even though the Tierschutzbund Zürich already pointed out in October 2012 that sick, pregnant and dying horses are left to fend for themselves in the Bouvry feedlots. The company of Bouvry does not want to lose its customers in Europe and claims. Why does one have to publish such images, which were taken a long time ago, to produce a shocking documentary? We are not actors, but farmers that feed, breed, and tend animals outdoors. We are proud of our work. About 80% of the horses slaughtered in Mexico come from auctions in the USA. Transport distances from the USA to the Mexican slaughterhouses are extremely long, up to 3,500 kilometers. At the export pens in Texas, the trucks are sealed and the drivers have no access to the horses in case of an emergency. Downer horses are seriously injured or trampled to death. I will now show you a film sequence from the US-Mexican border. We follow multiple trucks to the Mexican border three kilometers away. 
As one of the Ruba Burrito transporter stops and the driver enters the border office, we get to examine the trailer. We notice two downer horses. Although it is prohibited to film in military facilities, we decide to do it visibly and to notify the border police. We want to show a border patrol officer the situation inside the trailer. With a wave of the hand, he turns us down. I don't need to look inside. We have this every day. He doesn't mind us taking more photos and filming. We notify border authorities and are able to prevent the transporter from crossing the border into Mexico. The driver is forced to turn around and unload. While the transporter turns and we get ready to follow, more horse transporters make their way to the border. We know many of them from previous investigations. They too transport horses to the slaughterhouses in Jerez, Aguascalientes, Camargo, and Fresnillo. From the border, the horses have to endure another 16 hours of transport. We follow several trucks to the Mexican slaughterhouses. In the middle of the trailer, a horse is on its back. It has minor injuries and its knee is swollen. The nostrils flare and indicate fatigue. One eye seems to have been wounded recently, presumably through poking with the moving sticks. In the foreground, the injured leg of another horse is visible. It is now when the entire deplorable scenario becomes evident. Multiple changes of ownership, transports to auctions, to collecting points, further on to export pens, across the border, and still another long transport to the slaughterhouse. Thousands of kilometers, ordeals for days or weeks, until the day of slaughter. All importers and supermarkets claim that their suppliers are compliant with European or Swiss animal welfare standards. Fact of the matter is that in the export countries, the animal welfare standards are much lower, and not even these are being adhered to. The importers and supermarkets claim to be able to trace the life of every horse back to the farm. This, however, does not work in practice. In Uruguay and Argentina, horses have no microchips or papers to document this. For U.S. horses going to Mexico and Canada, the only unverified information that has to be disclosed is the origin and medical treatment of the horses over the last six months. We repeatedly experience drivers simply continuing their transport, even after we point out down on horses. We believe that these drivers are cooperative and have compassion towards the horses, but there is no way to unload the trailer. It is sealed. If the drivers break the seal, the cargo is worthless. Using a sharp-edged pipe, they try to get the downer horse to stand up, unsuccessfully. Then one of the drivers fetches an electric prod from the driver's cabin. These prods are not only prohibited in the EU and Switzerland, but also in Mexico. He prods the horse until it manages to stand up. With injured legs and a bashed in eye, it has to endure the trip to the slaughterhouse. Argentina, horses are mistreated by untrained personnel and rounded up by dogs. The horses are transported in open vehicles without weather protection and without access to water and food. In November 2013, the Tierschutzbund Zürich released findings about stolen horses in Argentina. Stolen horses systematically enter the slaughter process which strongly increases the risk, the risk of drug residues in horse meat. Moreover, we documented serious animal welfare violations <coughs> at the slaughterhouse Lamar. The following film sequence was recorded at Lamar in September 2013. We managed to get into the slaughterhouse. Slaughtering is done at night. What we witness here does not in any way correspond to the assurances made by the Swiss GBFI or Belgian Equinox, who import horse meat to Belgium, France, Germany, and Switzerland. A dying horse is lying in the tube. No one tends to it. It should be put down immediately. We have German veterinarian Claudia Eckert pass an expert opinion on the following footage. She reports, the ground of the holding pens is not slip-proof or skid-resistant. 
For shod horses, the ground is too slippery. Horses without the horseshoes can move about the concrete floor fairly safely. In the video, it is audible, though, that some horses have horseshoes. The utilization of materials like sheet metal and concrete makes it very noisy inside the building. The echoing is very unsettling for the horses. Furthermore, herding the horses into the kill chute is poorly conducted, causing additional anxiety in the horses. Staff of the slaughterhouse approaches the horses from diagonally above, which poses an extremely threatening situation for the horses. This shows in the nervous play of their ears and the head movement towards the direction of the staff. The anxiety in the animals is most obvious when the employee approaches from diagonally behind and above. It is impossible for the horse to escape to the front because the chute is too narrow and crowded. The conception of the kill box is flawed. The horses next in line can see over the door and into the kill box while the preceding horse is being shot. The person moving the horses through the chute is using an electric prod for this. The use of electric prods on horses is prohibited. An approach from the front and diagonally above is even more frightening for horses. The horse's severe anxiety is visible in the nervous play of the ears. First shot. The shot with the captive ball is not placed correctly. The horse's head is not restrained, which makes it difficult to apply the device directly on the skull and results in a loss of impact energy. The angle of the shot is not directed straight at the brain, but slightly off towards the opposite eye. The effect of the stunning might not have been sufficient. The stunning might have been ineffective. A pinto horse is hanging on the tubular track by its hind legs. The horse shows three spastic contractions of the entire body and the limbs, which exceeds the normal amount of muscle reflexes usually associated with exsanguination. Stunning failure is suspected. End comments, veterinarian Eggert. The slaughtering is almost over. On our way back, we again pass the horse lying in the chute. It is still alive, but evidently in pain, since its breathing is typical. The horse reacts defensively to a touch on the head and lifts it briefly. Same slaughterhouse, Lamar, 26th of February, 2013. Upon pressure from an Argentine animal welfare organization, the slaughtering is to be interrupted for 24 hours on this day. Horse owners 